I'm going to teach you how to craft a nine foot crocodile, a spoon, a knife, $30 Canadian. Let's get started. Always start with water, add some concrete mix. Just add a small portion of the concrete mix to start and you're going to want to work that into a sloppy consistency to avoid clumping. And just to continue to add more of your mix as you go and you don't want to overdo it and start with too big of a bucket, especially if you're going to be working it by hand with a garden trowel, you want to start with a very small bucket, maybe a quarter or less. So I'm just taking my time, you know, adding little by little. If you want it a little drier than uh, the classic peanut butter consistency for this. Starting with pencil, trace out your design on parchment paper. It's gonna be uh, able to release the concrete fairly easy after it's done drying. Then use a black permanent marker to get your final outline. And just, uh, Start a little bit slow because I had two pieces there, so I just kind of had to be careful not to move around too much. Once you get some concrete on there, you're going to be good to go. Just flatten it out. Make sure you get all the voids out. Keep patting it down as you go. And you're going to want gloves for this. Just continue to form. Oh, move some around. Look at it from different angles. Uh, as I built it up a little taller, I wasn't really quite happy with the shape, so I didn't follow the permanent marker. We're now using Mason Mix Type S Mortar, which is a sand and cement. Make sure all your rocks were out of the bucket before you start mixing this stuff. And I won't go over mixing again, I only have to do that once. So I'll just start by adding some scoops. Just slowly smooth out if you need to. Um, use a spray bottle, spray that concrete mix base just so you have adhesion. You don't want to be adding a wet mix onto a dry piece without wetting it because it's just gonna suck the moisture out and not gonna get a good bond. I'm putting marks on the gator where the nostrils are gonna go. Take a clump of that mixture and just start kneading it like dough if you have to. Add a little spritz of water, get some workability to it. Just make sure it's free of voids. And flatten it down, shape it, and then plop it down on your nostrils there. Work it down a bit so that it's going to be sticking. Take a trusty spoon, work it down even more. And take the inner part and start creating the hole where the nostril is. Parchment paper worked really great as a release agent against the wood, against on the concrete ground. Not so great, however, I wouldn't recommend it for that. Start by rounding two clumps. And this is going to be for the eye ridges. I'm just going to work it into a sausage there. Once you're happy with both of the shapes, connect it in and only smooth the inside parts. Keep the outside flat still. And now I kind of jumped ahead a bit and uh, started making some veining that protrudes out of the eyes. You can see that there. And then I'm gonna do some cutouts. I'm gonna create kind of a popping out eye effect and I'm gonna have that in just a moment on the screen here to show you a bird's eye view of what I'm doing here. It's a little difficult to see. I just wanna throw this out there the end of the video you feel you have any questions or things that weren't explained well just comment down below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can Now that the eyes are finished, here's a review of how it was done. These eye ridges will form into the eyeballs. Make knife incisions where the black areas are and remove. Now smooth out the outside of the eyeball with your trusty spoon. I'm gonna add another little layered dimension here just above the eye ridge and just work that in gently. On the lower portion of this crocodile, I'm gonna use the spoon to Kind of create that modeling 
alligator skin texture, but I'm only going to go just around the outside. The top of the head, I'm going to keep smooth. As far as the pattern goes, it's your discretion whether you want to keep it kind of random like mine or more grid-like and how you do and how much detail. That's totally up to you. I'm adding just little finger-sized clumps just to create some extra dimension on it. Just random little bumps, and I'll kind of work that in around when I'm doing the modeling there to kind of give it a cool 3D effect. I'm going to do lots around the back of the head. I'm going to skip through that because you can't really see it, and I'll show you after. I'm going to add in a couple teeth here and there. It's just kind of protruding past the mouth line that you can't see. And here I'm creating a fade to where the smooth meets the alligator texture. I'm just working it in a bit so it kind of blends. Let's take that spoon and continue to smooth out the top there. The head is finished, so let's give it a spray and cover it with a sheet of plastic or some dirty old shopping bags that we got some hanging around. Now, since I've already done one of these, I decided to do both the body and the tail at the same time. Uh, if you can see, the sun is out and it's in the middle of the day, so it's going to be a lot hotter. Your mix is going to dry out a lot faster and that can get frustrating. So you might want to do just one at a time if it's your first one. And I switched back to the concrete mix with the rocks in it to get the base, just the same as I did the head. Just a review, pat it down, keep working at it, clear out all the voids, get your basic shape. If you have to, mix a little bit more concrete, keep patting and add to it. I tried to keep the tail design shorter, not too long, and fairly rigid. I didn't use rebar or remesh in this, as I don't really think it's necessary. It's I'd empty the concrete bucket, mix sand and cement with a smooth coat over both the body and the tail. I had a leftover piece of gloss tile that I'm working on there, and I'm just uh, creating little hot dogs, all even proportions. I'm just going to line them right down the back to get the ridges. Now, to make this easier, I found if you just make a, a solid straight line, then after you're done three of the ridges, then you're going to take your knife and make markings and cuttings where you're going to take the segments out. And you can reuse those segments to complete the other ridges. Just watch here. I would recommend taking out larger chunks because where the gaps are, when you push down the ridges that are in place, it's going to kind of close in the gap there and they're going to be a little bit too close together, but that's entirely up to your design. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to try and keep the same consistency, use a spoon to smooth out, and of course the crocodile texture pattern around the outsides.
Now, if you decide to go crazy and do both the back and the tail at the same time, you want to keep some large plastic to keep the direct sunlight from drying out your piece. And of course, even though I did, I want to give a little bit of a spritz to keep that bond and the workability. Continue the same processes you learned on the midsection. We're almost done. Once we are finished, we're gonna spray down the project and cover it in plastic. Ideally, you'd have some sort of shade cover. Direct sunlight is not great. What we're trying to do is slow down the drying process as slow as possible for at least 24 hours so it won't dry too quickly and crack, depending on how hot it is every two to four hours. Well, thanks for making it to the end of the video with me. Um, appreciate you coming along for the journey, and if you make your own crocodile, best of luck to you. To see more tutorial videos, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Bye for now.